forging cyber, forging cyber security experts. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV. Now, our free preview of Secure Ninja's online Sensei series has generated such a positive reaction that we've decided to give away every single module from this Cyber Kung Fu course, featuring Larry Greenblatt, Tom Upjagrove, and me. If you like what you see and would like to experience a Secure Ninja training course in person at any of our training locations, we have some amazing time-sensitive specials for you. Just visit secureninja.com specials for all of the do not miss deals. And now here is your free module from Cyber Kung Fu for the Certified Ethical Hacker version 8. Enjoy! Hi, and welcome to session 10, session hijacking. Okay, so with session hijacking, um, there's a particular um, um, website that a person might be going to, and so hijacking might be stealing that person's session, like somebody might have been at uh, Starbucks and they logged into their Facebook page and uh, we were able to actually steal their session cookie and then log in as them. In this case, we're going to do a little thing. It's kind of like parameter tampering. We're going to, we're going to, but we're going to act as a person in the middle. Yeah, it's a new term. Yeah. Yeah, but we're going to do the uh, the MTM, and uh, uh, in this case, uh, when we uh, instead of using something like Wireshark, which I could see the the um, uh, the the web, uh, the HTML coding go by in the web. Um, there are better tools for watching web. Uh, one of them is, is Burp. Uh, Burp, another one is Paris, but I, I kind of like Burp. And uh, uh, so I've got it kind of uh, set up here. Um, so a couple things you have to do with Burp in order to get it to work. One, um, you bring the tool up, and this is just like a little Java tool. Okay, so um, I go into proxy, and uh, in the options of proxy, uh, we'll see here that it's using port 8080. So 8080 is a pretty popular uh, secondary web port. Um, uh, in our case, uh, we're going to create an actual web proxy. So all the web requests will go through this tool okay, on the way to the web server, and then all the, rec all the re returns, all the requests coming back will have to go through the tool. So we can actually watch everything that's going out and everything coming back. Uh, we could actually capture the whole conversation, um, or we can um, just capture you know, a certain part. We can, we can just get the request going out. So that's what I want to do. So I want to capture the request, manipulate them to a degree, um, and make them come back as something else, um, unbeknownst to the person. So the first thing I have to do is I, ha I have to make sure that um, the web proxy is running. The second thing I do is when I bring up my web browser, okay, uh, now if I try to go somewhere, Okay, um, what will happen is it, it should flatten out, it should go dead. So I set up my uh, internet connections and I come down here to the LAN settings, right, and I'm going to click on this box and uh, I'm going to put in the local address of my, my NIC, which is 127.0.0.1. One and that port that we use with um, with Burp was 8080. Right, so I'm going to make that 8080 as well. Okay. Good. So um, now if I try to go to something, see how the Burp's kind of hitting down here. So mm -hmm. basically, when I go to my proxy. And I don't know if I can get this any bigger. And so, but here's the actual request that went out, you know, to encrypt the Gmail. But I don't necessarily want to use Gmail, so I'm going to do this. So I have a thing called the intercept, and the intercept will will grab any request going out. And if I click on this forward, it lets it go. 
but then the next request is going to come in. And Google's kind of crazy because Google will make like 10 requests out mm -hmm. because it has to hit all of its analytic servers. So for the moment, I'm going to turn this intercept off. I'm going to go back to my web page. I'm going to hit the... Now you notice how I, I got that um, kind of uh, self-signed certificate. Mm -hmm. So another little cool feature about this is it will actually decrypt um, um, SSL sessions because it uses its own self-signed certificate. So it creates a certificate. Um, it, um, my browser's trying to get a uh, Google certificate. It actually gets the certificate from uh, Burp. Burp then passes that on to Google, but still catches everything in the middle, so it's pretty cool. Hmm. Um, all right. I go back to my target. Another thing I do with this target is I'm starting to pick up a lot of information. I go to this um, DuckDuckGo and I'm going to go um, add to my scope. Right? Mm -hmm. And when I click on this uh, filter here, I got a little checkbox here that says show only items in scope. So if I want to get a little more contained about it, and again along this bar I want to click again. And you notice how it kind of moved everything out of there. So I'm only looking at what we're doing on, on uh, DuckDuckGo, right? Mm -hmm. Good. So I go back here to my proxy, um, intercept, and I'm going to turn the intercept on now. Okay, so we just kind of slide that down there. All right. So let's say I did something like I went, uh, I want to find everything I can about sh uh, um, uh, Chevy cars. Right. So... Chevy cars. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, you'll notice that when we open this up, we got a certificate error. And we go up and we look at the actual certificate error and view the certificate, okay, you'll find that it actually uh, comes from Portswear CA, Certificate Authority. Portswear is a company that actually makes burp. So it's just a self-signed certificate. You could actually use your own certificates. Um, or a third-party certificate, and you would never come up with these kinds of errors. Okay? Um, yeah, web proxying really um, popular. Uh, some companies will use web proxying to uh, watch the habits of everybody in the company uh, as to where they're going, how often they go, uh, what times they they go to websites. You know, are they going shopping, whatever. And it's also used sometimes to block websites. Okay. Um, okay. So we have uh, our Chevy cars in here, and we're going to um, hit the search. And you can see that um, Burp again comes up. And you notice up in the top here of Burp, I have Chevy cars. That's the search term that's being forwarded to the web server, right? So I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to put in uh, Ford trucks. This is a case I got to do it again. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to forward that. Okay? Even though you can see up here, up at the top, it'll say Chevy cars. Mm -hmm. Actually, it brought back exactly mm -hmm. what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So it's conceivable, you know, in this very simple scenario, to be that person in the middle to manipulate what is going out and what's coming back. Right. Yeah. I can see how you can play some pretty good pranks like that. <laughs> right, so um, that you know, this is really a, a type of session hijacking, uh, not very sophisticated, uh, but it is definitely uh, parameter manipulation. And we're going to use this technique as we go into the next lab, hey, okay, to um, uh, actually get some really in interesting information. Cool. Um, uh, so that there you have it, um, session hijacking. Now we hope you've enjoyed this free module, but there's lots more. The Cyber Kung Fu course has 29 videos in all and will really help build you a solid understanding of the CEH version 8 curriculum. Don't forget, if you prefer to attend one of the Secure Ninja's courses in person at any of our training locations, you really need to visit secureninja.com slash specials for some amazing discounts and other deals. I'm Alicia Webb, happy training. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.